You wanted the best. You've got the best podcast. The hottest, hottest. podcast in the, world. in the world. The Chris Boss Show. The preeminent podcast with guests so smart you may experience serious brain bleed. The CEOs, authors, thought leaders, visionaries, and motivators. Get ready. Get ready. Strap yourself in. Keep your hands, arms, and legs inside the vehicle at all times. Because you're about to go on a monster education roller coaster with your brain. Now, here's your host, Chris Voss. Hi, folks. Chris Voss here from the Chris Voss Show.com. The Chris Voss Show.com. Welcome to Big Circus Ten, the Sky, uh, friends, neighbors, relatives, all the people who join us every day. We're certainly. Uh, very happy to have you as well. Uh, be sure to refer the show to your family, friends, and relatives. Go to goodreads.com, for chess, Chris Voss, YouTube.com, for chess, Chris Voss, the big LinkedIn newsletter, the LinkedIn 130,000 group, and our LinkedIn stuff over there on LinkedIn as well. Uh, today, we have an amazing gentleman on the show. He's uh, been fairly successful in life. Well, fairly might not be the right word. He has written the newest book that just came out February 28th, 2023. How far do you want to go? Lessons from a common sense billionaire john katsimatidis is on the show with us today he's gonna to be talking about his hot new book and his life his uh, his journey through the american dream and everything else which has been quite the story journey uh he was born on the greek island of nisros in 1948 and six months later his parents immigrated to new york city in search of a better life during his senior year at nyu and with just eight credits remaining he dropped out to work in the grocery business full-time. By his 25th birthday, he was already a success with 10 Red Apple supermarkets scattered across Broadway and Manhattan's Upper West Side. He's a firm believer in giving back to the community and has been a strong supporter of the Police Athletic League for nearly 30 years. He works on the board of Columbia Presbyterian Hospital, the Hellenic Times Scholarship Fund, and over the years, served in a variety of volunteer positions in the Greek Orthodox Church. Welcome to the show, John. How are you? Well, Chris, I'm uh, happy to have, I'm with you. And uh, I'll tell you, uh, I guess uh, sometimes you're better lucky than smart, but it help, a little bit of both helps. And a little bit of hard work, according to your book, from what I read, too. Well, the, the more hard work you put in, the luckier you're going to get. There you go. What is luck is what happens when hard work meets opportunity, I think someone said. Uh, John, give us a .com or wherever maybe you want people to look you up or order the book on online. Well, I'm, uh, you can go to catchmatees.com or you can order the book on Amazon.com or order the book on uh, 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 barnesandnobles.com or our radio station, wabcradio.com, the, the, the store. And the store has uh, autograph uh, books, and you can instruct us how to uh, autograph it, and you get it out of our uh, radio station, wbcradio.com. There you go. So, John, what motivated you to write this book? You've done a lot in your life. You've uh, contributed a lot in your life. What motivated you to say, hey, I'm, I'm going to write a book and tell the story of my life? Well, I was trying to think about doing it uh, uh, a few years ago, uh, and we started it. Uh, and then COVID hit, hmm. and then we put it on the shelf uh, for a while. Then we had to update it. So we actually started it over, over three years ago, and we finally pushed the button to do it because, uh, look, I, I have a family, and I want them to, uh, our grandkids to come. I don't have any right now. I want them to know <laughs> who's paying the tuition in the next period of time. There you go. Well, it's good to know. It's good to know you're you're looking to that next generation. So, uh, you know, when I read your book, it, it really seems to tell the story of the American dream, especially the immigrant story of what really built this country, the melting pot of, of immigrant families coming to America. My great grandfather came from Germany. And, uh, and and it's a it seems like it's a real American dream story. Do I have that right? Well, my two grandfathers came in 1913. Mm -hmm. uh, one with a, a Turkish passport because uh, his original family came from Constantinople, which was a Greek city, uh, but it was part of Turkey at that point. And the other one came from the island of Nisidos uh, along the, uh, the Turkish coast. They had the 12 islands. And at that point, Italy owned them. So he came under the Italian passport. <laughs> so I guess I'm a United Nations uh, person. Uh, <laughs> And they, they left my father in the old country 
to take care of the three sisters and the mother. So after World War II, the British were so upset that the Italians were on the wrong side, they took the, those 12 islands along the Turkish coast and they say, we're taking it away from Italy. Let's give it back to Greece. So my father, who worked for the Italian government, uh, keeping his eyes on a lighthouse for 17 years by himself in a lighthouse, went back to his island, married my mom, and then came to, coming to America. And in 1949, they came to America. I was six months old. And... Uh, then our American story begins. But my two grandfathers came in 1913. Yeah. I got really jealous when I was reading your book because it seems like you you had a great family unit. It, no, Your parents didn't seem to complain. They're kind of like my grand, what I remember my grandfather and grandmother doing. They, I never heard them fight. I never heard them complain. But they loved family. And there was you know big feasts and food and everything. I got hungry reading your book. Every, everything was family. <laughs> Everybody got together, and uh, uh, I was at the dinner with somebody the other day, and he was very imp impressed by the Greek word philotomos. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and the Greek word meant that, that um, uh, be, be proud of your family so much that you would never do anything bad to embarrass the rest of your family. Mm. Uh, so I think that's the key. And I, I know uh, uh, we bought one company, uh, the Grisidis company, that was Greeks that were in Germany and moved from Germany to America and opened up the Grisidis food company in, I think, 1888. There you go. There you go. So you, 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 you are technically, you know, you don't, you don't follow the normal thing where people go to college and, you know, get a degree. I think at one point you were considering being an engineer. You, you go and get in the supermarket business. And, by uh, accident. Accident. That's what <laughs> comes another point in my, to, in my book that you're going to reach many forks in the road mm -hmm. in your life and deciding which way you're going to go during those forks in the road will decide which way your life goes. And you don't you don't have the hang-ups that a lot of people today do. They go, well, I can't borrow money. You know, the banks won't lend me money. You know, I can't I can't do this. I can't do that. You you make it work through networking and knowing people. And it seems like you really have an affinity uh, uh, affinity for liking people, networking, getting. To I know love people. people. I mm -hmm. love people. Don't forget, when I actually didn't uh, drop out of college. In my senior year, I was working 70 hours a week. Mm -hmm. And uh, I ended up being eight credits short from graduating. And I, you know, I knew I didn't want to be an engineer because I think it was calculus that uh, I didn't get, uh, I didn't finish. I hated calculus. I couldn't, I looked at the calculus equations. I said, how is those calculus <laughs> equations going to make, uh, let me make a living? Mm -hmm. Meanwhile, back at the grocery store, I knew if I bought, an orange for 10 cents and sold it for 20 cents, you know, it was a good deal. Yeah, that's the best algebra, 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 rhythm best algebra. Is. Buy it for one dollar, sell it for two dollars. Yeah, very simple math. And, and, and so you, you work hard. I mean, has anything, some people think that when you become successful or rich in America, that you can just rest on your laurels. Are you still working 60 to 70 hour weeks? I, I, I hit the age of 70 plus. And I still work 60, 70 hours a week, but it's a different kind of work. Mm -hmm. You know, my mother and father were, were, were crying when I, I didn't finish college. And uh, they, they were saying to me, we sent you to the university. We sent you to the university to become a, a Hamali. A Hamali was a guy that used to carry crates on his back. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, and I, listen, I did what I got to do to be successful. Uh, failure was not an option. Yeah. So I wrote this book to, to help friends. I said, if you read my book, then you may make a billion dollars too because it gives you the different uh, forks in the road in life. Mm -hmm. And uh, um, and person said to me, how do I make two billion? I said, <laughs> 
Yeah, you buy two books. Yeah, you you yeah you buy two books or wait for the second uh, copy to come out. I like that. I will hold you to that. If I don't make my first billion, I, I'm I'm going to call you. <laughs> well, I already promised uh, thousands of people uh, oh. a billion dollars. I'm not sure Elon Musk's money is enough for that. There you go. Well, you know it, it, the American dream: hard work, uh, putting in the time and effort. When you when you when you first kind of establish yourself, buying your first store. And, and getting that opportunity, did you have a vision of what you would become? Did you have a vision of owning multiple stores throughout New York City yeah, and, and what you would yeah, become? <laughs> uh, I, uh, you know, I, I, had, I, I got my first store, uh, and then uh, we ended up getting about 10 stores by the age of 24, 25. And by the age of 24, 25, I started making a million dollars a year. And what's the joke? That's when a million dollars was really a million dollars. Yeah, yeah. Uh, 1973, 74. And I, I, then when I made the first hundred million is I took that money and reinvested it in real estate. Mm -hmm. 1977, the world was coming to an end in New York. Real estate was worth nothing. I was too stupid to know that. So I bought real estate. Uh, in 1977, when the world was coming to an end, I figured worse comes to worse. If I can't find a tenant, I'll open up another, another supermarket. Mm -hmm. And I woke up one day and that money I put into the real estate business, about three, four, five million dollars. I woke up one day it was worth a hundred million. Wow. And uh, so by the late, by the late 1970s, I was in the real estate business and I was uh, in the supermarket business and both were giving us good cash flow to go on to the next part of life. Mm -hmm. You seem to have a real affinity for New York, and I, I can't blame you, but I'd like to hear it in your words. Why, why do you love New York so much, and why is New York so important to you? Well, I've got comments coming in that people are saying, the people I will of New give York you, love I will give it to you. Now, <laughs> if you invest a million dollars in the west side of New York, a million dollars, and you want to sell that property in five years, there's 20 different people that want to want to buy it. Mm -hmm. You invest a million dollars in take a place, Kansas City, Boise, Idaho. In five years, what do you think it's going to be worth? Maybe a million and a half. Mm -hmm. So New York is the greatest city in the world. It's a, a great melting pot. There's people from all over the world <coughs> that find a reason to buy, find a reason to sell. And it's that's the way it is. There's no other city like New York. So if you want to make a billion dollars, maybe you should move here. There you go. There you go. There's I opportunities think, now. You I know, think you let me tell you, I don't know what the heck is going on, but in the last 24 months, 484,000 New Yorkers that were middle class and above and millionaires moved out. Mm. I think it was part of it COVID was part of it. Uh, you know, the soaring price of real Crime. estate there for a Crime while in the city of New York, mm. the social, the socialist agenda mm. where uh, the, the crime is all over our city. So uh, I've said to the governor's office, I said to the mayor's office, you know what I said? There's 3000 violent criminals in New York. Well, who are you going to support? the 20 million New Yorkers or the 3,000 violent criminals. We don't understand why in the state assembly, in the state senate, <coughs> they are supporting the 3,000 violent criminals. How about the 20 million of, of, of uh, citizens that want to be able to walk to their restaurants and, and feel good that they're not going to be mugged? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that definitely makes a difference. So how important is leadership and uh you know i wrote my book beacons of leadership how important leadership is and leadership is a real important aspect to me i was a democrat i was a republican mm -hmm. i ran bill clinton's campaigns in the mm -hmm. 1990 i helped run it mm -hmm. uh, and i love bill clinton because common sense democrat mm -hmm. but the common sense democrats right now don't have the guts to stand up against the the bizarro democrats Mm -hmm. The ones that, that 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 don't, you know, they just want socialism. Now, if you look at, let's take Venezuela. Mm -hmm. In 20 years, 
Venezuela went from the wealthiest country in South America to being destroyed. Mm-hmm. They're trying to do that to America. Yeah. I don't care if you're Democratic. I don't care if you're Republican. What I care about is caring about our cities, caring about our states, caring about our, our, our country. And you've been on both sides of the political spectrum. Is there a way we can ever reach a point where we can get, you know, government, it seem, you know, everyone seems to be very polarized right now. Is there any way that we can get government working again? Is there a problem with the, with, you yeah, know? No. Absolutely, because all it takes is common sense. Ronald Reagan and Tip O'Neill didn't like each other. Yeah. But they, they yelled and screamed all day. But at 6 o'clock, they got together, had a beer, and worked things out for the country. Yeah. Uh, Newt Gingrich, Bill Clinton didn't like each other. They yelled all day, but at six o'clock they got together and did what's right for the country. So what I'm looking for is common sense Democrats, common sense Republicans getting together and working what's best for our country. And it's not happening right now. Mm-hmm. And that makes it makes me upset. Extremism mm-hmm. on the left or extremism on the right. Is not good for the country. Mm-hmm. Let's let's do. I I, I want to. I'm not going to be around, but I want my kids to be around in 2076, when it's the 300th year of the United States of America. And if we keep going the way we're going, we're not going to make it. Yeah, we're not. I mean, it's it's an interesting dynamic that's going on in our world right now. How how important is uh, you know, we see a lot of people, I, I see you talk about the three day work week. I've seen you, you know, we have these, we have a lot of this new generation of generation Z that hopefully your book reaches, uh, that, uh, you know, they, they just, they just want to be influencers on TikTok, And, uh, to me, that doesn't seem like a path to the American dream of, of real success. Listen, you work hard. You have to work hard. You have to have vision. Yeah. People have to like you and, and you can't, People, nobody's going to like you. Nobody, if you're staying home, sitting on the couch, (laughs) it's not going to happen. You know, you got to be in the office working or, you know, during the, uh, during COVID, 95% of our people were in the office working, running our companies. Mm -hmm. So it takes a CEO with the courage to say enough is enough. Hey, if you have a, a company that has a soft CEO, Short the stock because that stock is going to go down. <laughs> there you go. Vision leadership is so important. Having a vision for the future and stuff like that. Uh, you've I done mean, a lot of. What happens when like, I've been criticizing General Motors? Mm-hmm. If she thinks uh, the CEO of General Motors, if she thinks she's going to have an all electric fleet mm-hmm. by 2020, 2030, by 2035, whoever believes that. I'll sell them the Brooklyn, Brooklyn Bridge at a good price. <laughs> I think you own the Brooklyn Bridge. <laughs> hey, you've done a lot of phil- philanthropy, especially in New York. How important is that an aspect to being able to give back to what you've achieved in your life? Well, it helps you give back. But what I found is an advantage. When I didn't know what I wanted to do in life, I said, well, let me get involved with uh, the church. Let me get involved with the religious groups. I got involved in the Orthodox Church, uh, which I uh, am the highest lay person in North America for uh, the Greek Orthodox Church. I, I, that gave me uh, access to uh, being involved with the Catholic Church, being involved with our, our Jewish friends, and, and putting it all together to work as a religious uh, group to do what's better for America. I got involved with many, many charities. So I got involved in charities. I got involved in, in, in uh, uh, people's charities. I, 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 the Police Athletic League, I took a big interest in. I worked with uh, uh, Bob Morgenthau, who was there for 50 years. Um, and I got involved in uh, uh, different political campaigns. And you know what I found? Hmm. I found I, I met a lot of people, a lot of people doing all those things, which eventually helped helped me in life. Hmm. Uh, I remember uh, helping run uh, Bill Clinton's campaigns. In uh, uh, I ran those uh, those um, uh, events that he had at the Jefferson Hotel. 
uh, 20, 25,000 each, 20 people, Democrats and Republicans. And nobody walked out of there disappointed because he knew his stuff. He was a smart guy. And I enjoyed uh, that. And I met uh, so many people that also eventually ended up helping me in business. There you go. There and you go. when I ran for mayor, mm -hmm. I remember whispering in uh, Bill Clinton's ear when I saw him at an, at an event. You know what I said to him? Thank you for the training. Yeah. You know, the one thing I came away from your book uh, in reading it is uh, the attitude of gratitude. You seem to be very uh, positive, very optimistic. You, you're very grateful for the experiences and the people in your life and stuff. You know, we've got uh, things coming in from uh, our live audience. John is a great supporter of New York City. Uh, the people of New York love John. So getting some great re replies there. Um, what What is, uh, how much of that has made a difference for you? And, and is your Greek heritage, you know, it, how much of that shaped you, do you think? Well, you know, other than... My father and my mother taught me never do anything wrong that's going to bring shame on the family. Mm. You know, you always keep that in the back of your head uh, because I, I, I love my family. Uh, and, uh, uh, you know, in about six years ago, seven years ago, the Greek government dedicated a stamp in my honor. That is awesome. And for two years or three years, that was the number one stamp used in Greece. And I wasn't going to do it originally. But I said, let me, you know, I, you know what I did it for? I did it for my grandfathers and great-grandfathers uh, for, their, for their memory. Uh, and uh, I enjoyed it. And, and, and uh, I think the same year they did a stamp for uh, uh, George Stephanopoulos and a few others. Oh. Ah. Yeah, you the know, mine was the number one used. There you go. There you go. It's always the number one. There you go. So, uh, you know, what, what, what is something about you that people you wish people knew? Maybe you know they they misrepresent or they assume things about you. Uh, everyone in media gets that. Uh, what's something maybe people sh may want to know about you? May, like maybe I, don't I know, love you. people. Yeah, and I'm there to help rather than to uh, attack or 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 just. You know, if people like you, you will do more business with them. Mm -hmm. And I, I learned that at an early age. And that's why I write in my book. I had about 12 mentors. Mm -hmm. And in, in life, you have many forks in the road. And depending if you zig or zag, you're going to become either successful or fail. There you go. There you go. Now, you mentioned, uh, I know we're pressed for time with you, John, because you've got a limited schedule and you're doing a lot of appearances for this. How are we doing for time on with you? I, well, I, I, well, I could do another five minutes or so. Okay, let's do that. Let's do that. What have we touched on that we can tease out about your book to get people to pick that up? Uh, that uh, if, you, if you read the book, maybe you get some tips and you're going to make a billion dollars. There you go. There you go. How important was those mentors? It sounds like they made a big difference in your life. Those mentors make it, made a big difference in my life. Let's say I had about a dozen of them. Mm -hmm. And for some reason uh, or another, I would say at least nine of the 12 or 10 of the 12 were, were uh, of Jewish background. Because they're, in New York, they had a lot of Jewish people. And uh, a lot of them were business people. And I dealt with them in the food business and the real estate business. Mm -hmm. So a lot of them were, uh, and I learned a lot from them. Mm -hmm. And what every, and that's what I do for the police athletically, because those kids from Harlem, mm -hmm. they need mentors. They need somebody to put their arm around them and say, here's the right direction. Mm -hmm. uh, and uh, Senator Moynihan, who I knew back 40 years ago, said one of the problems in, in, in Harlem was 70 or 30% or of the uh, uh, of uh, the families only had a one uh, one parent family. It wasn't the old leave it to beaver family where you had a mother and a father. Mm -hmm. Well, 40 years later, guess what? It's much worse. There you go. Only 30% of the, of the families have two a parent family. So these kids need guidance. Otherwise, they go hang out in the pizza store and they <laughs> end up getting in trouble. Or they get on TikTok or something. You know, that's a big thing these days. That's, uh, you know, I, I wish I knew how it actually worked. But, 
You know, you got you got to find a twenty five year old and below to find out how it actually works. There you go. There you go. So, what do you what do you hope when the when the all the books are written about you in the end and history tells its tale? What do you hope people come away? What do you hope people remember about you? What's most important to you? Is well, that uh, John Casamitides was a, a hardworking person, a philanthropic person, uh, worried about charities, worried about people, uh, and raised his kids to. Uh, in in the same manner, and I hope I don't have any grandchildren, but I hope my kids uh, eventually, when they have uh, uh, kids, that they'll raise their 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 children in the same way to believe in people and to uh, to be kind to people. If people like you, they'll do business with you. If they don't like you, they'll walk the other direction. There you go. Common sense, uh, billionaire. You know, it's, it really is a simple program when you talk about it. You know, the American dream is such a beautiful thing. And a lot of entrepreneurs really discover that and how important the, the American dream is and, and the rights and, and the privileges that we get from it. It only happens in America. You can't find it in too many countries uh, yeah. overseas. And New York is the greatest city in the world. So if you can make it here, how did Sinatra say? If you can make it here, you can you make can it anywhere. anywhere. Yeah, there you go. Well, there that's go. what. And, and I'll tell you, um, I, I think New York will make a comeback. I pray for New York. I am working hard to make sure New York makes a comeback. And New York has gone, you know, just like any country or city has gone through, you know, recession times and booms and and uh, changes. There's always kind of the ebbing and flowing of the economy. I'm sure it will, too. It's the greatest city on earth. And and uh, like you say, it's it's a city of immigrants. It's it's the melting pot. There is astounding. And the people that have come out of it, like yourself, have learned a lot. John, it's been wonderful to have on the show. Thank you very much for well, coming. Chris, on I hope the, the, our paths cross again real soon. Let's and do I'm that here whenever you're around. Let me know. You know, I'll buy you lunch. <laughs> that sounds like a deal, John. Uh, John, give me your dot coms wherever you want people to order your book. Uh, you can go you to uh, uh, wabcradio.com or you can go to catsroundtable.com uh, or catsmatidis.com. There you go. Order it up, folks, wherever fine books are sold. But only go into those fine bookstores. Don't go in the alleyway bookstores because you might get, you know, uh, you might get robbed. <laughs> I don't know. Uh, how far? Do you want to go? Lessons from a common sense billionaire out wherever fine books are sold. You can order it on Amazon and other places. Thanks to John for being here. Thanks to be honest for tuning in. Go to goodreads.com for chess Chris Foss, youtube.com for chess Chris Foss, and linkedin.com uh, for chess Chris Foss. Thanks for tuning in. Be good to each other. Stay safe. And we'll see you guys 